Once, two youngins goes down the hill to the dollhouse where Master Kilpatrick's children are playing. They want to go in the dollhouse. And one of the Kilpatrick boys says, that's for white children. They say, we ain't no niggas because we got the same daddy you has. And he comes to see us near every day and fetches us clothes and things from town. They is fussing. And Missy Kilpatrick is listening out of her chamber window. She heard them white niggas say, he is our daddy. And we call him daddy when he comes to our house to see our mama. Many owners and overseers believed that sexual access to slave women was one of their prerogatives. The rape of black women also served to humiliate their husbands and undermine the integrity of slave families. Lord, child, that was common. Masters and overseers used to make slaves that was with their husbands get up and do as they say. Send husbands out on the farm milking cows or cutting wood. Then he gets in bed with the slave himself. Some women would fight and tussle. Others would be humble, feared of that beating. If they told her husband, he was powerless. I was one slave that the poor white man had his match. These here old white men said, what I can't do by fair means, I'll do by foul. One tried to throw me, but he couldn't. We tussled and knocked over chairs, and when I got a grip, I snatched his face all to pieces, and there was no more bothering Fanny from him. But, oh, honey, some slaves would be so beat up when they resisted. And sometimes, if you rebel, the overseer would kill you. Us colored women had to go through plenty, I tell you. My mother's mistress had three boys. One 21, one 19, and one 17. Old mistress had gone away one day, and mother always worked in the house. While she was alone, the boys came in and threw her down on the floor, and tied her down so she couldn't struggle and one after the other used her as long as they wanted for the whole afternoon mother was sick when her mistress came home and when old mistress wanted to know what was the matter with her she told her what the boys had done and she whipped them And that's the way I came to be here. Okay, now, all my life, I've heard of the paddy rollers. Yeah. Now you have the paddle rollers. Mm -hmm. I know paddy rollers is right. the common yeah. term. Yeah, I think you should say paddy rollers. Paddy rollers. Okay. My grandparents were from Georgia, and they both said paddy, paddy rollers. rollers. In fact, when they were really angry with white people, they referred to them as paddies. Mm -hmm. paddy. Action. Marshall Butler, Slave Narratives, Volume 4, Georgia. I's Marshall Butler, 88 years old and was born on December 25th. I knows it was Christmas Day for I was a gift to my folks. Mammy was a Frank Collar nigger. And her mane was of the tribe of being butler some miles down the road. It was one of them trial marriages. These tried so hard to see each other, but old Ben Butler said two passes a week were enough to see my mammy on the collar plantation. Now, if a nigga went out without a pass, the paddy rolls would get it. The white folks were the paddy rolls. They used straps with the belt buckle fastened on. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I got paddle. Happened this way. I left home one Thursday to see a gal on the Palmer Plantation, oh, five miles away. Some gal 
No, 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 I ain't get no pass. The boss was so busy, but everything was fine till my return trip. I was two miles out, three miles to go. And there come the paddy roller. I was so scared on it. Well, I, I, I couldn't move. Oh, they give me 30 licks, and I ran the rest of the way home. And built buckles all over me. Ate my vittles off the post railings. Mm -hmm. Some gal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was worth that paddling to see that gal. Do it all over again to see Mary the next night. <laughs> oh, Jane. Love me like you used to, Jane. Chew me like you used to. Every time I pick up, my heart get bigger. Sorry, sorry, can't be your piper no more. Mm. Mm. And some gal. <laughs> my darling. Slaves had an opportunity to go courting on Saturday nights on their own or on neighboring plantations. My darling. Girls would put on a spare dress if they had one, and men would put on a clean shirt. Girls always try to fix up for partying, even if they ain't got nothing but a piece of ribbon to tie in their hair. Wasn't none of this sinful dancing where you partner off with man and woman squeezed up close to one another. Mm -mm, that's respectable, the slaves did. Shifting round from one partner to another and holding one another out at arm's length. <laughs> Saturday night, Sunday too, young girls on my mind. I remember that when us caught it, us went to walk and hunted chestnuts. We'd string them on, put them around our necks and smile at our fellas. Ooh, Peggy, do you love me now? Papa's name was Tom Vaughn. And he was from the North, born free man and lived and died free to the end of his days. He saw my mom to Kilpatrick place and her man was dead. He told Dr. Kilpatrick, my master, he'd buy my mom and her three children with all the money he had, if he'd sell them. But Dr. Kilpatrick was never one to sell any but the old niggas who was past working in the fields and past the breeding times. So my pa marries my ma and works the fields, same as any other nigger. Sometimes the wedding ceremonies were held in the slave cabins. Other times, they were orchestrated by the owners. As a is I married Exeter Durham. He belonged to Master Snipes Durham, who had the plantation in Orange County. Oh. We had a big wedding. We was married on the front porch of the big house. I had a, a white dress, white shoes, gloves that came up to my elbow, and Miss Betsy Dunn made me a wedding veil out of a white net window curtain. After Uncle Edmund said the last words over me and Exeter, Master George say, Come on, Exton. You and Tempe got to jump over the broomstick. You got to do that to see which one of you gonna be the boss of the household. I jumped first, <laughs> and you ought to see me. I sailed right over that broomstick, same as a cricket. But uh, when Exton jumped, his feet were so big and clumsy <laughs> that they got all tangled up in that broom and he fell headlong. After the wedding, we went down to the cabin Miss Betsy had done all dressed up. But Exeter couldn't stay no longer than that night because he belonged to Mars Snipes Durham and he had to go back home. He left the next day for his plantation. He'd come back every Saturday night and stay till Sunday night. And we had 11 children. Some owners respected slave marriages, but the marriages had no legal standing and could be broken apart at the owner's whim. 
owners had their own reasons for pairing up certain slaves. After I'd been at his place about a year, the master come to me and say, you gonna live with Rufus in that cabin over yonder. Go fix it for living. I was about 16 years old and had no learning, and I was just an ignorant child. I say to myself, I was not gonna live with that Rufus. Well, the next day the master calls me and tells me, woman, I was paying big money for you, and I was done that cause I want you to raise me children. You a big portly gal. Rufus is a big portly man. I want y'all to bring forth portly children. I put you to live with Rufus for that purpose. Now, if you don't want whipping at the stake, you do what I want. Oh, I think it's about master buying me from the block, saving me from being separated from my folks. And then I think it's about being whipped at the stake. What am I to do? So I decides to do as the master wish. So I yields. Well, I remember quite well how those polo children used to have to eat. They were fed in boxes and troughs under the house. They were fed cornmeal mush and beans. When this was poured into their box, they would gather around it, the same as we see pigs, horses, and cattle gather around troughs today. Oh, us never got enough to eat. So us keep stealing stuff. Us had to. Course we know it was wrong to steal, but the niggas had to steal to get something to eat. I know I did. I got so hungry, I steal chickens off their roost. Yes, some I did. Chickens used to roost on the fence then, right out in the night. We'd cook the chicken at night, eat him, and burn the feathers. <laughs> they talks a heap about the niggas stealing. Well, you know what was the first stealing done? It was in Africa, when the white folks stole the niggas just like you'd go get a drove of horses and sell them. But since the Lord saved me from a life of sin, I don't think about them things. Who will tell you?